all gusto. So we're we're excited about that. So um, I want to be able to just minister the word of God to you. But before I do that, I just want. Where if, if there's anybody you know that is, um, or even in yourself, if you, there is things that you're asking God to touch you, to heal you, I just want you to be able to stand up where you're at. And if you know somebody that, that needs to be touched by, 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 by the loving arms of Jesus, just stand up where you're at. And, um, and, and the scripture clearly says that believers will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. It says that we believe for, for, for the God who is more than enough to be able to touch us and meet us. Now, for, there, there, is, um, yeah, there, there are a lot of challenges that, 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 that physically people are going through. Um, um, just mindful of Ben and Sandy. They're just really just needing our prayers. Um, um, we had Ed who's, uh, who had a, a, a stroke while we were in South Africa and, and is recovering. And, and, and so Carolyn's just really standing alongside in that. And just mindful of that. And so if, if you're seated and, and you can reach to somebody that's just next to you that needs prayer, just can, can you just lay hands? The Bible says believers lay hands on the sick. And, um, and so we see that in Mark, uh, Mark 16. And so, Father, I thank you your presence has an incredible impact on meeting the needs in a, in a house, my God. It says, you're in your presence, mountains melt like wax. So we welcome your presence here for these very needs, my God. From every, every emotional need, Father, that's needed to be touched, every physical need that needs to be touched, Father, every relationship need that is, that is there. Father, that also hurts. That also creates pain. And so, Father, you're the healer. Um, as Jesus, as he opened the scriptures and he says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me. And Father, He has anointed uh, Your very presence to come and touch the needs that, that, that are represented in the people standing here today. And so we stand asking, my God, that, uh, that uh, Your Word does not return void, but accomplishes all that it's sent out to, to do. So Father, we thank You for healing. We thank You for wholeness. We give You the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank You for just... Uh, just, just Acknowledging. The big thing is to acknowledge it. And then uh, God meets you where you acknowledge it. And um, this is where two agree touching anything. It's done by our Father in heaven. Uh -huh. And uh, many times when you come to pray for somebody, ask them what they're believing for. Because if they're believing for a miracle, then agree with them at that point. If they're believing that the surgeon's going to have a successful uh, surgery, then agree there. The Bible says where to agree, the power of agreement is where things start moving in the heavens. So just, just something to be thrown out there. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm just excited. and I've, I've kind of just put a pause on my Ten Commandments that I've been going through, the Ten Principles of Relationship. And uh, so I'm going to kick off in January with 7, 8, and 9, and 10. But um, I'm just continuing in a in sort of a, a different vein uh, for for December, and, and I don't I don't want you to miss next Sunday. <laughs> Valerie's up to preach. Hold Amen. tight to your seat. <laughs> Valerie's up. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so I just want to let you know that as we go through this, I just want us to be able to let's celebrate Christmas, mm -hmm. and uh, is kind of my theme, my emphasis, my my heart cry is to celebrate Christmas and. Um, yeah, and, and the Christmas season is, is in full flight. Yes, so the, 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 the White House tree get lit. Um, uh, the the, the uh, um, Flagler Beach Parade went past yesterday and uh, did its thing. I mean, the, if you haven't, uh, if your eyes are, are open, then you've seen that the, 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 the stores have been opened and the deck the halls. I yeah. mean, it is, it is is good to go. The radio is on full blast and we're hitting the carols. So we thought, well, if they're doing it. Why can't we? We kick off our service with, with, with carols and TV is hitting it with advert and the music mode is there. Uh, Penatronics is doing the thing. So my little Chase is happy. He loves Penatronics. He always goes through the little kid's YouTube and finds it and hits it. He, he knows where to find it. So it's a good to go for Christmas. Hallelujah. It's all, all, all it's pedal to the metal. So I just want to pick up a scripture in, in Luke 2, uh, chapter 2, if you want to get your devices there or open the page there. Um, and let's have a look at that. I just want to welcome all those that are watching. Hi, Dwayne in Canada. I hope you're awake and uh, uh, you're, 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 you're obviously following on. And obviously the guys in, in Zimbabwe, South Africa. Hi. I just uh, 
Um, just, just honoured that they would sign in and just join us today, um, so I'm all over the all over the world. So it's just wonderful to do that. Um, so our title today, um, let's uh, it's a, call it a happy Christmas. That's what I've kind of titled it. Ha- a happy Christmas is what I really want to be able to emphasise to you today. And it's a joyous, and, uh, and many people have this, this joyous greeting, Happy Christmas, and uh, Merry Christmas. And, and it's wonderful to know that we have this incredible liberty this Christmas to say, Merry Christmas, Christmas. Happy Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, uh, we beat that Antichrist spirit right on the snout. Hallelujah. It's not going to tell us what we need to say when we need to say it. And for those that don't know Jesus, well, Happy Holidays is cool as well. Just long as you're happy, okay? As yeah. long as you're happy, we 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 okay. So we, you know, we we may greet you back, Merry Christmas or Happy Christmas, but you know, Happy Holiday is good. Just just be happy, okay? But um, from my message today, if you don't have Jesus, you're going to have a challenge being happy. All right, you're going to kind of uh, have uh, a challenge. But um, some know why to greet the season with a Merry Christmas and a Happy Christmas, but. And some just don't have a cooking clue. They just think, well, this is what we say around the season, you know. Well, they don't know why, why, why we're happy. But, uh, but the birth of Christ was a joyous and a jubilant season for heaven and earth. Eh? Yes. And uh, so I just want to pick up the scripture in, uh, in Luke 2, uh, where the shepherds were kind of just chilling out. Now, that the shepherds were kind of the rough and scruffy of, 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 of society. They kind of just, they kind of looked after the sheep and hustled around. The, and they, they weren't like the... Uh, the upper uh, upper echelons of of employment, okay, and so they're kind of hanging out there, and and on that first Christmas, when uh, suddenly all this happened, and uh, I just want to read from verse ten and pick up a couple of verses as we go through, and it says, and the angel said to them, Have we got it up there, yeah. yeah, and the angel said to them, fear not, for behold. <laughs> It's amazing how every angel, when he pitches up on the scene in front of humanity, has to say, well, fear not. Kind of just, it just rattles their cage, you know, just really rattles anybody's cage to see the supernatural. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news and great joy that that will be for all, all the people. Verse 11, it says, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Verse 13, and suddenly there was with the angel... A multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Verse 16 it says, "Um, and the shepherd, and they went haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they they saw it, they made known the sayings that they they had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. Yes. And, the she- and the shepherds re- returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. I tell you what, there's a whole lot of jubilation going on because there was great news. <clears throat> Unexpected news, but it was around that season. So, um, so our question is... Uh, uh, that that, that this, 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 this joyous and happy happiness came to the hearers because it was good news. It was great news because they've been looking uh, forward to this. Many, uh, many stories have been told about the Messiah coming. The word Emmanuel, God with us, coming. And suddenly it is unfolding right before them and it creating this incredible ju- jubilant atmosphere. And, and today, church, with the news that we have... It should be resonant in us as well, be resounding in us as well. It should be. Um, so, yeah, this Christmas se- season is when happy endorphins kick into gear. I tell you what, it's Valerie's kicker. She really comes into another level. I mean, she was here until she got out of here after, after 10 last night. She was just singing along and putting up Christmas trees and just doing her thing. It's a happy place. She lo- Anything that twinkles with lights and stuff, it just kind of does does it for Valerie. So, you know, like I told you, our Christmas tree has been up in our house way around uh, Hurricane Ermelo. That's when it kind of, kind of, kind of started coming out there. Uh, yeah. So she says, you don't want to waste time during the hurricane. You want to do something, you know. And so I wanted today just look at what, uh, what sustains true happiness. Because um, it's important that we do that. Um, uh, and we don't want the shallow, fading, fading happiness that's here today and kind of fades away tomorrow. 
And, and today's message is, is about sustaining true happiness. Um, and so, yeah, uh, happiness has been sold to us on, on television, on media, on the adverts. Um, it's, it's, yeah, um, it's, it's, it's telling us what, what happiness is. And, uh, and yeah, yeah, go and get pillow.com. Go, mypillow.com. If they just don't get that off the jolly television, I'll be sorry. Yeah, I mean, that make you happy if you have a good sleep. Mypillow.com. Good Lord. Um, I can guarantee you it doesn't work. Hallelujah. <laughs> Who's got one? Does it work? I it do. does not. It doesn't. Uh, you see, it's mixed, mixed. <laughs> so we've been told what makes us happy. Some of us, we don't even clue what makes us happy. And some of us have forgotten actually what makes us happy. Jesus. And so, um, so even if you had, you, you need to understand that, uh, that, that people are batting to put their hand, handle on this, on, on, this, on this thing of happiness. I want to make a statement. Nothing makes you happy. So happiness is more about a who than a what. That's right. It's more, uh, it's more about a who than a what. That's why I make the statement. No thing makes you happy. It's not a thing that makes you happy. It's, it's a who that makes you happy. And so I just want to unpack that today. And it's in your earliest memories. If you look, think back at the happy times and all that, it's not about things that you had. It's about the people that you're with. At school, at college, at work, on vacation. It's people that you think about. It's the who's that kind of kick off the, the, the happy moments and the happy thoughts and the happy understanding. So happy is always associated with the who or two, more than one kind of people that, that, that you've been with. So, so if, if <coughs> happiness is a what, then we can just go out and get it and we got it. And then we should be okay. Um, but the, there's no such thing. Uh, a happy what is always always leads to a, a, a happy what else? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a caffeine so happiness. Right. It kind of wears off, and you need another kick of caffeine, you know. Uh, so it wears off. It's like being so happy about my flip phone when I got it. I was excited. I, I, I could walk around and get a phone call. That's a fantastic. Then they got, man, then they advanced it to text messages on my flip phone. I could get a text message. Somebody type me a message. And then I could take a photo. Yeah. Whoa. Video. <laughs> Hang my happy went out the window when the smartphone came. Because then, man, I, I needed the GPS. I needed, I needed, the, I needed uh, all the other things. And so, you know, it's, it's there. It's like, it's like your dream car. Becomes the old car. Eventually. Yeah. Amen. So you, you, it's always, and that great job, that dream job becomes a hard job and an old job and, and, and the happiness wears out. So, so if, you, if your happiness wears out, well, maybe you never had happiness in the, in the first place. Just a little side note. Parents, <laughs> we're as happy as our most unhappy child. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> kind of keeps us in the zone, okay? So we're looking for a, 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 to celebrate Christmas. And, uh, and, it's, and, and to do that, we've got to be, how can you just, just have this happy Christmas? And if you're not happy, mm-hmm. if you're not happy. So, so let's, have, uh, let's unpack this and, and see uh, that, that it's a who, not a what, that makes us um, happy. And if our focus is on the what, then uh, we're going to have relational regret, not possess- possessional regret, regret at the end of the day. We're going to have uh, uh, relationship regret at the end, and not that. Uh, because at the end of life, ladies, you're not going to say, please go and get my Louis Vuitton handbag so I can stroke it and smell it before my last days. Right. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and boys, you, you're you not going to go to your pimped up F- F-250. And, sorry, guys, if the, the Fords and the Chevys have their problem. And, and you want to hop up and, 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 and smell the disgusting smell in your cab any longer before you pass away. No, no, you're not going to be wanting all that stuff and see how many likes you got on your Facebook. Right. No, no, no. It's, uh, it's the who's in one's life that you're going to be wanting to spend time with, to make things right with, to connect with. I, I, going through uh, the journey with, with these last, last days and last hours. That's all she wanted to do is just connect and, and maximize her, her, her time with, with the who's. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and we wanted to do the same. So true ha- happiness is, 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 is a relationship in a relationship nature and uh, not so much about, about things. But I just want to just 
throw two thoughts out, out there about uh, people that say, I don't need relationships. I'm, I'm actually quite cool with that. Well, if you're a person that's always had relationships, then, then obviously you're going to say, well, I'm, I'm okay without relationship, but you don't know what it's like to be without relationships because you've always been in relationship. It's like saying, I don't really need food because you've always had food. Yeah. When do you haven't got food? Yeah. I've been there. You kind of run out of it. So suddenly you realize, man, I kind of like it and I'm actually missing it. Mm -hmm. And so you, you could be in, in, in one of those, those phases. But Nat Natalie, she came across to, to the States with us in 04. And when we, she arrived here, for the first time she realized she had to make friends. Because where she, was, where she grew up, and that's the lovely thing about being part of community and about a church and family, uh, she grew up, there were about six ladies all pregnant and gave birth around the same time as Natalie was born. So she kind of just, still today, Hannah and, and um, okay. Chloe and all of them are still friends because she grew up with all these friends and went to school with them and played sports with them. And then suddenly we pluck her out of that and bring her to here, to, to America where she had to start making friends. The hardest thing in her life because she realized she'd always been with friends and suddenly she was without. Um, I just remember Nathy. You know, and uh, he, he stayed back to pursue his cricket career in 04 when we came across. And eventually he got to the place and says, hey, mom and dad, it's time to get with family and can we make a way of get, getting him across here? And so we, we, we did that. And thank you to Jessica. Yeah. She made it easier for us to get Nathie across here. And uh, I've got a beautiful daughter-in-law in, in the process. But I'm just saying that, uh, that one group is saying, oh, I, I don't really need relationship. I'm cool. You know, but you've always had relationship. You don't know what it's like without relationship. Right. And uh, it'll affect your happy. I want to tell you that. And then there's some people that just have had relationship issues and, and your journey's been isolated and you kind of settle for this, say, this is what life has dealt me. I'm an island and yeah, I'm, I'm okay. Uh, but I want to tell you that's untrue and unhealthy. It's unhealthy yes. because what you're doing is you're robbing other people. Your, your incredible gifting, your talents, your stories, your life, everything. You're, you're just robbing people of that. And, and so we, we, and, and we have a... a, a we don't have the opportunity to be able to love you guys, love you. And so it's, it's those kind of two people who are saying, don't get robbed by those two, those think, those two thinkings uh, about relationship. So don't say you don't need relationships. So uh, um, the fruit of happy, happy a person is peace. Mm -hmm. You find a person that's really happy actually has peace, and it's yeah. an inside peace. Happy people have peace for, with themselves, whether they're rich or whether they're poor, whether they're blue collar, white collar, or no collar surface. Um, just they're happy uh, whether you are from Africa, Asia, uh, Alaska or Argentina uh, um, you've got this inside peace and that inside peace just brings this joy on the outside I mean I have the one movie and, and the guy walking around like he's always sucking on lemons you know and they say yeah, and he said, this is my happy face. You know, <laughs> no, no, it kind of reflects out on, on your face. Uh, that, and, and so, you know, when you have this internal peace, you don't have these internal wrestles of the haves and the have-nots because you come to a place of being content. That's right. Those, the, the kids in Haiti and stuff, they're content. Um, the four people that kept on serving um, the, 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 and helping at the runway there, um, the four or five times that, uh, that Jedediah has come, come into Haiti, they've had the same tattered clothes. And this time they came, and uh, first thing they did when they got off the plane is they kitted these boys out with, with, uh, with new clothes. And, and, uh, and that Sunday they were in church, and they brought their parents with them, and their parents came and gave their lives to Christ. And it was just wonderful to, to, to be able to, to see that. So, um, it's just, uh, yeah, I don't know why I said that, but hallelujah. You just uh, understand that there's, there's no warring in this, in, inside you. You're kind of just content, and you, 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 you're not bitter or angry. You're comfortable. Because um, you found that place of peace, and it's important that you find that. Relational peace is key to happiness. Key to happiness. <coughs> Possessional peace is temporal. Possessional, if you have these, and you have a look, look at the kids, man, they're so excited about their presents at Christmas, and they tear it open, and by the end of the day, they're playing with the box that they took the gift <laughs> out of, and, and that's more fun, sitting inside that, always chasing inside these empty boxes, and you push them around, he thinks that's the best toy out, and so the, the whole fancy battery-operated gizmo that came out, and you're not interested in that, so, you know, it kind of wears off the, uh, the that, that, um, the, the, the possessional, possessional happiness, uh, but relational peace, <laughs> I tell you, relationship peace is, is, is something that's deep, 
it's solid, <laughs> it just keeps going. Mm -hmm. And there's three areas in our lives I just want to quickly touch on that we need to really make sure that these three areas in our lives, that we have this relationship peace because uh, that helps you get to a platform where you can walk happy, man. You can walk happy. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so let's have a look at that. It says uh, the peace, it's, it's peace with others, peace with yourself, and peace with God. True peace comes from these three areas. The Romans 12, 18 says, if it's possible, so far as it depends on me, live at peace with all. That means you have to live with peace at yourself and with, with God and with, with others. Live at peace with, with them. I, I know that uh, at sometimes people really got, you know, they, they got misinterpreted Val and I, or, or they got upset and they kind of didn't want to be around us anymore. And I would say, you know, it's their loss. I'm a nice That's guy. Right. Yeah. yeah, you are. <laughs> it's their loss. I'm a nice guy. <laughs> and so, you know, they understand that. But peace with God, He's the source of peace. And so the priests say, the people that uh, don't quite, uh, uh, the non-Jesus people thinking, okay, yeah, Rod, yeah, now you're making your pitch again, that the only way you get peace is that you need to be a Christian. True. Well, Jesus said that you don't need to be a Christian. I got your attention, eh? Yeah. Christian was just something that came along in the Church of Antioch down, down in Acts 11. They started calling them Christians. Like they call us happy clappers, charismatic, crazy matics. They call us those things because we are in this love relationship with the Jesus. So what does Jesus call us? He, want, he calls us followers. Yes. He says, I want you to be a follower of me. Amen. And I want to just say that you want to you want a relationship with God and have peace with God. Be a follower of him. Yeah, yeah. Kind of rubs off. Kind of kind of affects you and infects you if you'll be a follower of him. So he didn't tell us, hey, you need to be a Christian. So stop putting that in your little preach thing to people. Say, no, you just need to be a follower of Jesus. He says, you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. So you say, well, I need to get my Bible. I need to know the truth. I need to understand the truth and then I'll be free. No, no. Truth is a person. Yeah. Let me get you to introduce you to truth, the person, and the person will set you free. I have no responsibility in setting you free, but Jesus is the one that will set you free. But I need to introduce you to him. And so you need, just to encourage you to be a follower. So I'm going to get off these tracks. I'll lose my place in my notes. <laughs> Hallelujah. So Jesus, um, uh, Jesus followers have discovered this peace. I know that I discovered this peace because I was really challenged because I was looking at how on earth... Am I going to reconcile all the sin of mine with a holy God? I had issues and I knew, Jesus, if you pitch up on the scene now, I'm in deep, deep trouble. But when I found out that he had paid for all my nonsense and all my shortcomings and everything else, and the track is clear for me to meet him and embrace him and follow him. Oh, I tell you, the peace that came to my life. That's why the scripture calls him the Prince of Peace. Because, yeah. man, it's just, it's setting you free to understand. Man, I don't have to hop through a whole lot of hoops. I just have to accept him, put his robe of righteousness on. Because, man, I, I, I'm a yuck yuck. I can't do it right, you know. I'm trying. But uh, as I journey, I'll get better at it. But I journey with him. So peace with God paves the way to peace with ourselves and equips us to make peace with others. Not true? Great statement, that. So when we have peace with God... It, uh, 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 it paves the way for peace with ourselves and then it equips us to be at peace with others. Because sometimes it's quite difficult to live with peace with other people. Mm -hmm. And you really need some Holy Ghost help mm -hmm. to bite your tongue, to say the nice thing when you really want to slap them. You know, those kind of things. Huh? Even as a pastor, I have sometimes sheep issues. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the most, of the, New, most of the New Testament church is talking about us making peace with God, making peace with ourselves, and making peace with others. It, the, all, the scriptures are, are continually uh, telling us that in the New Testament and how to journey with that because we have this, this, the, the, this issue that's continually drowning out our peace and our happiness and stuff. So Jesus unpacks a, a, a great truth about happiness um, um, as, as he's journeying along. Because a lawyer comes to him and asks him this. He says, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? So they had 60, 600 plus laws. And so they always had this little debate amongst the, the religious dude, which is, which, which is the most important of this. And, and one would not expect. Uh, and so obviously expecting, uh, thou shalt not serve other gods. Thou shalt not uh, serve other idols. Thou shalt not work on the Sabbath. You're kind of expecting that from Jesus. And, uh, uh, but this is what Jesus says in, in Matthew 22, 30, 37. You shall love. 
The Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And that is the greatest of, and the first commandment. Yes. <laughs> Wait, love. No, that, that's a relationship word. Yes. That's a relationship word we're talking about here. Because Jesus knew the key to happiness is going to be relational. The, key, the place to be at peace is going to be relational. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, this is where you find your happiness. This is where you find your peace. Yes. This is the greatest commandment. If you can go this direction and, and, and pursue that, then that's really the source of your happiness. It goes on to say in Matthew uh, the 22 and verse 39, following on, it says, And the second is like, has the same weight, has the same importance. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And that's the loving others and loving yourself. Kind of packing it in what we're saying today. And so um, most non-believers saying, listen, Jesus is really just getting in my way. It really he is just getting in my way and and so um it's it's uh it's it's not a happy journey going jesus away because he's really cramping my style i can't get a happy hour when this jesus thing is in my sights uh, you know if I, I can't even go and have a happy meal because over the lips and on the hips you know so you know <laughs> they got all this that they're pushing at us is happy but um, Jesus is not on the forefront as, uh, 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 as a non-believer. He just, uh, no, no. But I want to just say that, uh, that Jesus is the way to one's true peace and happiness. It's, it is the way because he's known as the Prince of Peace. That name, he, he, peace is a person. And his name is Jesus. So we at our core are on a happy quest. Really, truly. People are, are trying this and trying that and... Let's have this drink, let's have this joint, let's have this. Let's try and find some happiness or some happy quest. Yeah, and it's temporal and, it's, uh, and it doesn't really last long. And so we're trying to not stay near Grumble Alley or hard get along by street. We want to kind of just be in a happy place all the time. And, but you have to go to work sometime, okay? So and then what happens to your happy? You can't be smoking it up or drinking it up at work as well. It doesn't work like that. So, you know, happy is a piece is a package deal. And, and, and so God is really wanting us to, to understand. You know what cuts me off at the legs? <coughs> is when this relationship here <laughs> is out of sorts. I can handle most things. Eh? But when I have this relationship out of sorts with Valerie, it's it kind, of, kind of just... Uh, it kind of just takes me out because I, 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 can't, I can't work with broken relationship. I can't, um, I can't, I, I cannot function at full steam. I just, I lose my happy. <laughs> I just don't do it too well. Mm -hmm. And the same thing is when I've done something that I know grieves the father. It kind of just takes the happy edge off me and I'm just thinking, no, this is, this is, this is not. No, it's just because you're happy wife, happy life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? So we want to make sure we got that on, uh, on point here. Um, and so you, you, you stop, and, it, and the greatest regrets in your life is, is those places where have broken oh, well, relationship. You know what they say. Okay, what did anybody say there? John said he was learning. John, John yeah. Covey's learning? Yeah. 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 Learn quickly, brother. Learn quickly. <laughs> <laughs> so broken relationships with God and with others and even with yourself kind of affects everything. And uh, I just want to kind of close off with uh, uh, the number one enemy of a relationship, just so that we can see if we have to check this box or uncheck this box or work at this box, okay? And it's, because uh, um, uh, it voids it of peace and happiness. It's just, uh, and it's, it's, it's one word, it's a three-letter word. It's uh, defined as uh, um, doing something that I shouldn't do um, or not doing what I should do or um, <coughs> falling short of what I should be doing or missing the mark. Followers of Jesus have learned this word and it's not been, the word is known as sin. That, it affects. I know that uh, the, 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 those that don't, don't kind of follow Jesus, you have your own definition of sin. You have a list of things that you just don't do and that you don't want to do. So you have your own list, uh, but us, us believers call it sin because Jesus kind of taught us that that is sin. So it kind of separates us. It's missing the mark. And so we, we that that is we got to be aware of it because the sin, sin separates us. 
Sin causes us to be separated. It kind of affects the relationship. It affects us when we se- it separates us firstly from others. When we hurt or we, um, or we disappoint or we damage or we destroy a relationship, it, there is that. And sin does that. It kind of gets in there and, and breaks the relationship up. And we're reminded again of, of, of Romans 12, 18. If it's possible, as far as it depends on me, live peace, peaceably with all men. And so sin erodes relationships and voids peace and happiness. Sin does that. So it's, it, sin is a luxury we can't afford, church. Yeah. It's just a luxury we cannot afford. And so that's why we need to have peace with God, because then He helps us deal with us, and then He equips us to help uh, deal with others. And so it, it, it separates you from others. Sin just does that. Um, when, we, when we do something to them, or we don't do, um, it just affects that. And then the second thing, it separates us from God. It separates us from God. And God doesn't leave us doesn't leave us. It's like Val and I. We have our, our marriage relationship, but if, the, if I do something um, that affects this relationship, um, it kind of just puts things between us so that when I want to get intimate or be close to her, there is something, it's this thing called sin that's in between us mm-hmm. and affects us. And so it does the same with God. It affects us. For example, when we lambase other people with our, with our mouths and we hurt other people and we, we speak down on other people, I want you to remember this, that Jesus created them, God created them, that, that He loves them, even though they're yuck yuck and they're not nice or they're still a pre-saved side and they're coming to Jesus, He still loves them. So if you have issues with them, then you have issues with Him. Mm. Tough one for church. Yeah. Amen. Tough one. It's like, boy, you, if you have an issue with my Nathan, my Jessica, or my Daniel, or my Caitlin, or my Val, or my, or my Natalie, and then you want to come be buddies with me, you have issues. You'd sort that out first, then come and we'll sort things out. I had, a, I had a guy that really hurt my son, and he wanted to come and just restore relationship. I said, have you restored it with my son? No. I said, I am open to restore things with you, but go and restore it with him first. Yeah, We're family. Yeah. If anybody talks bad about you, Coastal, mm-hmm. the wrath of a shepherd comes out. Because mm-hmm. I love you guys and I'll protect you guys. Mm-hmm. I always have a great love for the pastors that I'm fellowshipping with in this, in this area. I will, not, I will not entertain an accusation against them. <laughs> Those guys cried with me, prayed with me. They came and gave me financial gifts to help me to get Val and I back yeah. across to this. They, they, they constantly checked with me. They love yeah. me. Yeah. And I want to just tell you, even the people that are your enemies, the Bible says you need to love them. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. So we can't, we, don't let let's sin, this, this animosity with other people. You know, God will, God will quicken you to be the better person and rise up. And so we don't want the, 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 our relationship to... But sin is subtle. It sneaks in, man. I mean, the accuser of the brethren comes in and finds a, finds a way. And uh, you walk in and suddenly you see Val saying this to, 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 to Maria. And they say, wow, she's talking about me. And you pick up an offense. Amen. And suddenly you feel the rejection. You see how the accuser gets in there and, and, yeah. and, and whines in your ear. Right. And, 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 and you remember I told you about the scandal on? Scandal on is that thing that trips, trips the trap. Be careful. It tells you, yeah, be sober minded here in, in, in Peter 5 8. It says, be sober minded, be vigilant. The devil, the devil's prowling around like a roaring lion, seeking somebody to do. He's seeking how to trip you, how to get you. Then he'll bait you. And when you take the bait, it'll trap you. Yeah. And then you're bound. And then you've got an attitude. And then you're angry. And then you, you just leave the church. Yep. <laughs> In the meantime, it was all because, Valerie's saying, let's just get a surprise party for Jerry. Yeah. And Jerry's thinking, oh, they've got an issue with me. Not <laughs> 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 Jerry. <laughs> no, that's why I do that Jerry. Jerry. <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> I'll pick on Jerry because he's tough. I can handle it. But I'll tell you what, eh? the enemy is the joy stealer. Yes. The enemy is a joy stealer. Yes. Uh, Mark and Dee, uh, when they came back from Bible school, they, they were teaching us how to make puppets. And so we were making puppets and stuff, and uh, every man made a nice puppy. And I, but our, my puppet was an ugly sucker. He was really an ugly <laughs> sucker. And so we had, to, we had to do this whole puppet show in front of the church. As a life, as a, as a life group, we did make these puppets, and so we had to do this puppet show. And so... The whole thing was about the joy stealer. And guess who was the joy stealer? My ugly sucker. <laughs> I want to just tell you he's an ugly sucker. The accuser of the brethren. And he would, he would do anything to get into relationships and, and 
put wedges in and, and pull you and, and destroy your peace. And the last thing I want to just say is, is that when he, he, he separates you from yourself, yes. he gets in there and, and you can't live with yourself. And I shouldn't have done this. I, you know, I mustn't have done this. And, you know, you talk to your subconscious 1,200 words a minute. 1,200 words a minute. You, you, you bombard yourself. And most of it is negative. Most of it is negative. And so you, you get to this place where you don't have peace because you're upset and you shouldn't have said this. I kind of have that on, on Mondays. And I said, man, I shouldn't have said that. I wonder if so-and-so took it the wrong way. I mean, I have people come to me and say, why did you look at me and say this when you said this from the pulpit? And that's why I'm, most of the time I'm preaching at the psalm, guys. I'm preaching. And so I've been saying what? You know, so so, I, so I, I'm not preaching at anybody. I'm preaching mostly at myself. Okay. So I want to make sure that in these three areas, with God, with others, and with, with myself, that I have not had this issue of sin that's causing separation in my life. But I just kind of put all that stuff, and it's, it's not a downer. It's just saying, hey, man, check these boxes, adjust this, repent, let's go on. Let's change our mind in this. I'm not going to let the, the, the joy stealer come and take my joy, and let's move on, and let's, let's, let's walk into the place. And sadly, the, the sin will also get you to substitute tell you that that that, that pleasure uh, it puts pleasure above people yeah. you know that an affair does that yeah. there's a lifetime of hurt for that little moment of pleasure causes that so wh where you put your pleasure in front of people man, that's sin. It, it, that, it's a, and he kind of just baits you and tells you oh, it's great it's wonderful nobody find out yep 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 and bam you take the trap you take it and the trap falls on you that, that, that you go for more image than, than intimacy. That you would go for more, uh, that, you, that you'll take position over people. I know of somebody who resigned because they chose not to treat, treat the, 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 his work colleagues the same as they were promising to change his situation to keep him employed. He says, no, people are more important than my position. Amen. I will not let that happen. Amen. The, the immediate for the eternal or the, uh, the, uh, the, the ultimate. I mean, Esau and Jacob, same story. I mean, Esau was so hungry, he could have eaten his fist. He was so hungry, and he traded his birthright for a plate of food. Mm. Took the immediate yeah. and lost out in the eternity. So make sure that what you're tempted and desire right now, because sin has placed its pleasures right in front of you, it's not a trap to take you away from the eternity. Sin makes happiness promises it cannot keep. Yes. <laughs> It'll bait you and say, this will make you happy, this will make you happy, this will make you happy. And it, it, it's a promise it cannot, it cannot keep. Sin is not your friend. Still, sin kills relationship and kills peace. Proverbs says, to keep your heart with all diligence. Proverbs for, for, uh, with all vigilant, for, 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 for from it flows the, 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 the springs of life. Um, if you don't guard your heart, your thinking, your meditation, your pondering, I tell you what, uh, peace will get destroyed. And happiness will be robbed from you. Um, and, and I'll close with the scripture here. Jesus' brother James writes this in James chapter 1, verse 15. He says, Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin. Yep. And sin, when it is fully grown. So the, 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 it's just a little baby sin. It's just a little cute little baby. <laughs> <laughs> And it says, yeah, but when sin is fully grown, it brings, brings forth death. I'll tell you what, we're here to celebrate Christmas. And sometimes we just have to get the clutter of broken relationships out the way. Man, there's things that you need to just sort out with God. Just get it out the way. God is so forgiving. He just wants us to repent. Bring it to our awareness and change our mind. He doesn't want you to beat yourself over, uh, over the back and get whipped for another 10 months because what you did. Just say, Lord, this is it. I messed up. Because we're going not for the shallow, the shallow peace and the happiness, the pretend happiness. Well, I'm happy because i got a gift stuff. No, we want to go for the, the solid, uh, deep happiness that holds through all season, man. Say, man, whatever it is, I'm holding true to this. And I'm going to continue with that. So let's celebrate this Christmas. Celebrate it. Not just tolerate Christmas. Let's celebrate Christmas. Yes. Celebrate it with the true happiness that's deep within us because of whose we are. Because of Christ, we are in total peace with Christ. We are total peace with ourselves and we are total peace with others. As it's possible. I know that sometimes you just can't be at peace with everybody because, that man, they've, just, they've got an axe to grind with you no matter what. But within your heart, you've dealt with it. You have no bitterness, no resentment, no remorse. You've dealt with it. And so in, before the Father say, Father, I've tried. If the doors are slammed in my face, 
My nose is flatter now because I've slammed the door in my face, but I've tried. And so I'm at peace. I've tried. I'm at peace with all men. And so I'm at peace with you and I'm at peace with myself. Um, and, and when you take that place, then you start seeing that place where, man, nothing can stop your happiness. And you go like a cork. You push it down, just bounce back up. You just got your happy face on. <laughs> nothing can, nothing, nothing can separate me from the love Amen. of my God. Amen. Nothing can separate me. Nothing can separate me from this peace. Amen. And so I want to just encourage you this, 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 this season. Let's just, <laughs> let's just get the real happy on and stay happy. Amen. 2018, we've got to be happy, okay? Because I mean, 2017 yeah. slapped us around the ears, okay? Yeah. So we, 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 we just need to come right now. So are you happy? Amen. Are you happy? Yes. Check the boxes off. Right. Hallelujah. Are you happy? So Maria, can I just ask you to come and... Do what you do best. Tinker in the ivories there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me just summarize this one. Maria's going there. And then I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I want to agree with you that, man, we're going we're gonna to put our happy on. This is going to be a happy Christmas. You know, we can put things back behind us and say, okay, let's move forward. So happy people are at peace with themselves, and others are with God. That's in summary what I've just said. Sin, is, sin undermines peace by separating and substituting values in your life. Jesus values and priorities, prioritizes peace with God, ourselves, and others. It's important. It's in God's top, top list. What's the most important command? Man, we love God. We love our neighbors. We love ourselves. Amen. It's right up there. Most important. Most important. Why? Because that's where our peace is derived. That's where our happiness is derived, is out of that. So if you're not happy, then can I ask you to consider following Jesus? Because he'll make you happy. I mean, I've been walking with him 40 years. He's called me out of some unhappy situations. He's held my hand. He's done what he's promised never left me, never forsaken me. And those footprints in the sand, when it was just two sets of feet, he was holding me, he was carrying me. And he wants to do the same for you. He absolutely adores you, absolutely loves you. And if you're not a follower of Christ, it's a prayer away. It's just inviting Jesus to be your leader. Because if you have a leader, you follow the leader. And he'll take you to pastures green, Brings you beside still waters, and he wants to love you, wants to love you. And if you don't have that that agreement to follow him and you want to, let's just pray together now, right now as a church. Church, you know how to pray out loud to encourage those that are listening to us and those that are here. Maybe they have not. They have not accepted Jesus. So let's pray together. Say, so Jesus, Jesus, I believe that you're the Son of God. That you died on that cross for me. That you paid for my sins. And you've forgiven me. I ask you today to be my leader. So I may follow you. I give you my life today. I give you my life today. In Jesus' name. Well, that checks one box that you're now sorted out with God. Whatever sins are racked up in your world have been taken care of, paid by Jesus. He picked up the check. He paid. How about, how are you with yourself? How are you with yourself? You look in that mirror and you say, man, you are a great guy. You're fantastic. On the money. No wonder Jesus loves you, man. Look at that. <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> Jesus wants you to be so confident in love and understanding that he absolutely adores you. He spins around under a violent emotion of joy. It's called ghoulin. When God wakes up in the morning, if he ever wakes up, I don't think he ever wakes up, but man, when he just gets gets his attention on you, which is always, he's spinning around under a violent emotion of joy. Yeah. 
And I want to pray. If you don't there, just let's just let's just make peace with it. Just say, Jesus. <laughs> oh, I surrender. <laughs> this fight within me. I give up. I give up. The fight and I. I choose peace and I choose happiness. I choose to love myself. I choose to forgive myself. It's a funny thing, eh? You can accept God's forgiveness. You can forget, accept others' forgiveness. But man, you cannot forgive yourself. And the Father says, just forgive yourself. It's the hardest thing that you guys struggle with and even I struggle with. I'm so mad. I shouldn't have, man. I could. Man, man, man. But Father, I thank you that we forgive ourselves. Because you've forgiven us. And Father, for the relationships that we are desperately wanting to to walk in peace with and joy with. He has some prickly edges. and But uh, lead me in how to put oil on troubled waters. Yes. Lead me in how to be able to say the right thing at the right time. Yes. How I can portray my heart. I'll bring restoration in here. So Father, I'm, I'm praying for the family today. That, you know, there's always... Somehow, life has its ways of causing relationship issues. But we want to be not just the peacekeepers, but we want to be the peacemakers, my God. We want to be the carriers of peace. And we know that if we have the Prince of Peace on board, we can be the carriers of peace. Yes. So, Father, we thank you. Yes. We thank you that, uh, that uh, it's joy unspeakable and full of glory that we are aiming at, pressing towards desiring and we choose to walk in it because it's a choice my God and so we thank you we thank you for this we thank you that we can walk in peace and we can walk in happiness and we are going to celebrate a happy happy Christmas in Jesus name yeah. amen and amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. so now yes you have Isn't he cute? <laughs> yes, it works. He's mine, you're too late. <laughs> We're going to end this service with the happy song. <laughs> Not the happy dance, the happy song. Oh, and we're just going to play a short clip from my sister's memorial that we did two weeks ago. And this was her request. She wanted people to know that she lived life to the full and to be happy no matter what. Yes. So um, our band, our worship team, back in South Africa. They only had a little bit of time. They were going to play the um, YouTube and they decided, forget this, we're going to do it live. So here's a little clip of, this was the end of my sister's memorial. And then we will put the real happy song on. I think you know the happy song. Yep. Yes, Pharrell Williams is saying. So if you have a problem with song, it's coming from a good heart. Okay. Yeah. So let's sing the happy song. Yeah.